you're saying that you don't remember saying that? No, I think you made it up. <laughs> well, I mean, with Dylan, you never know because he's, he is possibly one of the greatest liars that's ever been born. No, it's very possible we did. We, I know we had, a, we had a great philosophical, many great philosophical late into the night chats, you know. <laughs> uh, it's very possible, but he, he's got a, a vice grip memory. So if he says it probably did happen, mind you, and 30 points again. 30 points, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's a five gallon drum, really. You know, you. Are you trying to say that you've never had 30 points again in a sitting? I am absolutely certain that I <laughs> never had 30. Although on that uh, chronic, uh, not chronic, as they bring it all back home DVD. Home. Yeah. No direction home. I, no direction home. I, I certainly looked like I had 30 <laughs> points. I have to say, I just watched it again recently, about, about two, three weeks ago. And uh, I mean, it, for a Dylan fan, it's extraordinary for a whole variety of reasons. But uh, the, the footage that we haven't seen before, the reaction to him when he went to yeah. electric, first of all. But I have to say, in terms of the people, and you featured quite heavily in it, but yourself and Dave Van Ronk were the only two of his contemporaries that I didn't detect bitterness or a bit of envy or the green-eyed monster in. there was there was an awful lot I know I know of three people contemporaries of ours who are friends of Dylan and I myself who committed suicide Paul Clayton who was an old friend songwriter he was so devastated he pulled an electric fire into the tub with him um, Peter Lafarge who wrote one of Johnny Cash's big songs Call him drunken or a haze, it don't matter anymore. Uh, Peter Lafarge, he slid his wrist in my bathtub. And um, Phil Oakes hanged himself. And in that one, one of the late nights that I had with Dylan, I said, does it ever bother you, you know, that, does it ever niggle at the conscience that um, your success was so devastating to these guys. He said, man, I can't take that on board, you know. People do what they do. And for me to take that on as a, as a lump of guilt would not... Uh, mm. would In the same way that he, did, he couldn't take on being the voice of a generation either. He never accepted no. that. That was no, something that was put on him. He didn't, yeah. It frightened him. It frightened him. Because he was very, very insecure when he came to Greenwich Village for us. And he, he ran around with us, and he was always looking for affirmation. You know, he was very, very insecure. And uh, I think nobody was more amazed than he was when he hit the big time, just zoomed off into superstardom. Mm. Well, your uh, place as a, a legend of Irish folk is there's no question about it, and you're in there now. I think you're stepping into the shoes of uh, Paddy Riley, is it? And uh, Jim yeah. McCann, I think on Monday's night gig, said uh, he credited you with making Irish folk music cool once again. Is there a revival in the whole thing of Irish folk music, and how would you uh, react to being credited with making it cool once more? Well, it's a cyclical thing. It, it comes and goes, you know. Um, different kinds of music become popular, then they begin to pall on people, and uh, then another cycle comes around. I always stuck with folk music because I felt it was a very honest kind of music. Uh, it was a history of the people in song. They say that written history is nothing more than the propaganda of the winner, mm. you know, huh. but folk songs tell the story the of story. the reality. <laughs> it's funny, you're, you're talking about, you know, you, you decided or stuck with folk. Um, if, if you look at, say, folk, jazz and classical, the three musical genres where, where age, experience, wisdom and, and long-term mastery of your craft um, gets acknowledged and gets more uh, um, um, praised as you get older. I mean, you know, in, in pop you can be huge for five minutes, you can make 50 million, retire, and then two weeks later nobody's ever heard of you and they're not interested. Whereas I'm, I'm looking, Dylan is now, what, he'll, he's 60, he's just done a series of three albums that are maybe... No, he's... he's, he's 63, isn't I'm it? 71 and he's five years younger than me. Well, again, he see again. You never know with him, with the, but 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 he's he's having a late bloom. Christie has just made one of his best records. Yeah, yeah. You've um, 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 
you, I mean, you've never gone away, but people are, are rediscovering what you did. Well, I'm a great believer in the philosophy that I heard a line from the poet Bertolt Brecht, uh, loosely translated, it says, uh, with a man's dying breath, he must be prepared to make a fresh start. <laughs> and I think that unless you keep excited about every day, and unless you keep that, the child inside you full of wonderment, you're going to age, you're going to, you're going to go stay. And that's one thing I never want to do. So you're still keeping it as exciting as it was back in the days when we saw I the video? It, I find it incredible still that I wake up in the morning and I have two colour cameras in my head and I am looking at the planet and the colours and, the, and the, the wonderment around me and I say, you know, why question miracles? This, is that the this secret? thing is a miracle. Is it the, the secret not to be, become jaded and not to become cynical, Liam? Is, is well, how can you? But so many you know, people do, You know, it never cease to amaze me that people can, because there's so much... There's so much just amazement in... When you think of the planet itself hurtling around the sun, this great ball of fire, you know, that this, this, this uh, atomic energy generator and that's just one little speck of flame in the in the millions billions of stars in the milky way hey, the wonderment of it all so your love for life is clearly unabated but you were telling me the iron jumpers aren't coming out of the the closet anymore <laughs> and you were offered a lot of money to wear them were you you were saying yeah at one stage in our we had just signed up columbia records and we thought we had made the ultimate amount of money, over 100 grand, you know, advance. And the next thing, a, uh, a clothing company offered us a quarter of a million to give our names to the iron sweaters. And we debated it, and we had a meeting, and we said, well, we're making a pile of money at singing. And the, the only livelihood of the people who make the sweaters back in usually the poorest part mm -hmm. of Ireland, you know, Donegal, Connemara, the Iron Islands. So the Iron Islands. Uh, are we going to take the bit out of their mouth for the sake of money that's going to be... So, so it was an ethical decision? I mean, you, you it was an ethical thought, decision, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 It's quite extraordinary, and I mean, uh, people know, obviously, that you've been in the business and you've been a vastly influential figure for 40 odd years, but I think they forget that the Clancy's in their day were, were the, the, the musical export equivalent of you too. You were the biggest Irish musical it artist was in the world. I, it was frightening, and I can see why somebody like Dylan would be frightened of it, because... Uh, I remember coming out of a concert and being jostled by the crowd one night and I get this jab in the arse and I look around and there's two teenage girls and one of them has a straightened out safety pin that she's just pulled out of my bottom and she said, he, it was up in Belfast, he's real, he's real, <laughs> that's his blood there, that's his blood. So if you prick him he doth bleed and if you go to the gaiety you will see him performing is it all this week and up until Saturday, is it, Lou? Yeah, and it's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you got Ronnie, Drew, Finmar Fury, Johnny McAvoy, myself, and the four different flavours, and Jim McCann holding it all and together. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? And all getting better with age, like a good wine. We're doing good. Yeah. Liam, Excuse it's a me. pleasure as always, and um, we look Thanks forward to Thanks for having me. We look forward to the And leaving me for half an hour with that bevy of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why I get up early in the morning to come to work. Yes. Anyway, listen, thank you very much indeed, sir. Now,